Uh, hey guys, welcome to Bottom Fishing 24 7. Uh, we said we'd go ahead and do some rigging videos, and today we're going to show you how we rig for sheep's head. Um, sheep's head up here in southeast Georgia and northeast Florida are typically your later winter fish, so January, February time frame. We like to go offshore around the reefs and catch sheep's head. Um, so this is just how we fish for sheep's head. Everybody's got their own opinion on how they do it, things they like. This is just what we like to use. So starting with rod and reel, we will show you. Uh, Richie, Captain Richie, like, uh, likes these ambassadors. These are the older ambassadors that they no longer make anymore. You can tell by the raised emblem. But these, uh, these are just real small compact reels that <clears throat> they're very fast. They um, they set up real well for sheep's head for us and the way we the, the way we like to fish for them. Um, rods we we've got a couple different things that we like. We mainly seven foot, you know, um, a fast action because as everybody knows, sheep's head are very quick. You don't you you don't really catch them as they bite because they don't bite so um, these these fast action rods are a key um, something with a limber tip that way you can feel a little bit better um, this one right here is a 2040 class rod um, and it's a this is a pin squadron here um, we're using 50 pound braid and this is eight strand braid so a lot more round, smooth, um, better feel goes through the guys really well. So that's the setup that we use for these sheep's head. As far as rigging goes, we've got everything already laid out right here. We use pro swivels that we're going to put on there. These are, I believe, 120-pound swivel. 80-pound um, works fine. The smaller, the better. Um, then we're going to go with a Mustad 3467 size 2 hook. So we'll put that in the camera so you can see. Pick those up. One of the best sheep's head hooks around. Hey, and that's actually classified as a sheep's, as head. A sheep's head hook. Yeah. yeah. On any forum right. that you look at. Yeah, it looks big, but it isn't. No, know? no, it really sets up real nice. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. You can actually get in the shanks long enough on those. You can actually get the hook out without, you know getting bit or, yeah. or bending the hook, you know. In fact, let's just yeah. go ahead and pull one of these out but, but, and show yeah. you. Show how small the gap is, too. It's a small gap, like it should be. Yeah. But it's, a, yeah, but it's not real thin wire, so you can actually get rough with that hook. Yep. But the shank, you, you know, you hook them in the teeth usually, or the, or the lip, so that, that shank's sticking out. And it's got an offset. It's a great hook, man. Yes. It's super sharp, too. Very. And it'll catch other stuff, so works good. D doesn't mess up the fiddler, either. That's right. All right, and uh, we we tend to fish in 35 to 55 foot of water, so we go with three ounce eggs on the line. Um, that's plenty for what we do, because we don't like to fish a whole whole bunch of current. So we're not going to go out there on big moon moon tides and have to fish five ounces or anything like that. Because once you get to that that heavy heavy weight, it's it's a lot harder to feel that that. Inf you know, infamous sheep's head bite. Um, we're going to start by rigging. We've got just plain line, our, our 55 pound line, and we're going to go from our main line. We like to put a top shot on it just so that when the weight is on the line, it's not on the braid, you know, chafing it up making it, you know, braiding it. So we're going to do a line-to-line -line connection from the braid to our leader. And this leader right here is Cajun 50-pound line. This is stuff that Richie's had for years since he was sponsored by Pure Fishing. Um, so any 50-pound line leader will work because um, we're, not, we're not going after a super toothy critter that's going to, you know, serrate it. Um, so, and like I said, this is going to be for the weight to travel on. So, 
what we're going to do is go ahead and get about two and a half, three foot of leader. Nice titanium scissors cut right through that line. And the line to line connection that I like to use, that we like to use, is a uni to uni knot. You can look on YouTube and look for a uni to uni line knot. It's not, it's not hard. There's plenty of videos out there on it. It's what we prefer. You can use any line to line connection that you like. This is just something that we prefer. It's a small knot. It's one of the strongest line to line connections there, there are. So this is this is a knot that we prefer. So we're going to go and get started with the line to line connection. I'm going to open the bale on that. Here's the line to line connection. And as you can see, Captain Morrell joined in. Yep. Good stand knotting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, like I said, you can you can look up the uni to uni knot on YouTube wherever. I'm just going to do it real quick. I'll tell you right now, Josh is a pro at tying this. And not only is it the strongest that we know of, it goes through your goes up when you got little small guides on these casting type rods, it goes through the through the guides, you know, pretty easy. All you feel is a tiny little bump as it goes through the top guide, because it's the smallest, obviously. But you um really can't really can't tell it's there. But we are going to use a swivel in a minute and he'll show you show you where that'll go. And it, again, like you said, this is just the way that we like to do it. There's a thousand ways to tie a sheep's head rig. But I can tell you, I guarantee you one thing, you better have the weight where it'll, where it'll hang so you can feel the bite and be loose below the weight, so to speak, with a little bit of leader because they don't bite. They just pull. They just, there's a little bit of a tug when you pull up on them, and that's it. You better hit him right then or he's got you and you pull up a hole of a fiddler. The infamous bite. Yeah. It ain't a bite. It's not a bite. No. All right. So now that we have the line to line connection, what we do is we like to use beads above and below the weight. That is that is basically for knot protection. So, you know, with with fishing for anything, bottom fish, you're constantly up and down, up and down, up and down. And what happens is that weight will slide up and down and beat into your knots. So the bead protects your knots because it slides up and it's a buffer in between your weight and the knot. So we're gonna slide that bead on right there. Next goes your weight. Like I said, we're using three ounce egg sinkers. Egg it goes on. Closer. I'll show them how it don't. It won't, once you put the, once you've got the knot right, you got the knot onto your where you start your mono. And that knot, even though it's small, there it's it. That bead's gonna stop that weight from going up there. So when it hits it, it can't go up your line. Traditionally, you know, people don't do that and they, they want the weight to, to free slide a lot of times, depending on the rig. But we want it to stop. And um and then we'll swivel it below that and it'll show you why. But it can't go up. So that's that's mainly what your top bead's for. And again, don't ever put it on the braid. But anyhow, that, that knot stops that with a bead. Yep. And it will not go through that egg weight. So there's your top stop on the on that rig for the weight. Yep. So after that, we're going to, like I said, we use these Spro 120-pound swivels. How long of a piece you got there? That's yes. I, and, and earlier, in, I said it was about two and a half, three feet okay. um, of leader. Yeah. Um, we like that. Just that's That's what we found to be. The most productive as far as not, it's not going to sit there and spin and tangle as much. It's not going right. to, yeah. it's not going to do a lot of the things that when you get a real long piece of leader, you start getting the bow in it. Yeah, because the, the fiddler likes to do this. Yeah, when it's going down. yeah, that claw it's, catches that current yeah, pretty does. good. Um, so yeah, two and a half, three foot of leader um, for your weight to slide on. So we'll have to have a swivel in that with a fiddler usually. Yeah, we've tried it both ways. Yeah, sometimes it'll work without a swivel, but. Yeah. Eventually, it's going to be a problem. It all depends on how much current is going to be as you're going down. If you're drifting, if you're sitting on a trolling motor, things like that. All those things play effect into... On a trolling motor? We'd never do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, yeah. We'd never. Mm -mm. That's another thing, too. You, yeah. When you sheep's head fishing, you got to be still. 
a lot of times, I mean, you can catch a, a sheep's head drifting if it's a lot of structure, but you need to be still. Yeah. And let him come to it because he's going to check it out. Yeah. We videoed it before, uh, you know, down below underwater, we videoed it. Mm -hmm. They come up to it. Yes, they, they do. kind of sample it. And finally, they inhale it and they spit it back out. So during that inhale, you got about three seconds to know that he's there mm -hmm. or you, you're coming up with the haul. Yeah, so, I, think, I think you've got some video of those uh, sheep said coming up and actually hitting the camera. Yeah. And uh, that, was, that was pretty cool. They did. To see. So, all right, on with the rig. Um, we're going to go from that little spro swivel and we're going to put that. This is going to be below the weight, but above the hook. So we'll go ahead and put this. And I just use a regular, you know, fisherman's notch, clinch knot, whatever you want to call it. Tie whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. And tie just, whatever. Just tie whatever. It's yeah. a terminal tackle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody's got their own preference. You just don't want a big tag because the braid will grab it and you'll have a, you know, one of those. Yeah. Tangled up nice. So just make sure everything is tight because if you've ever sheep said fish, you know. Pound for pound, Ooh, it is one of man. the strongest fighting fish there is, especially on this light tackle that we're using. We're putting some massive strain on everything from the reel all the way down to the hook. So you've got to make, because the sheep's head will make sure that it exposes whatever weakness is in yeah. your rig, your yeah. line. If you've got a nick in your line, he's going to he's gonna show you where it's at. Um, in fact, sometimes what we like to do is put a drop of super glue on our knots just to hold them together even because because we want that tag to be as minuscule as possible so if if you know anything about tying these knots if you don't have a lot of tag when that fish goes to pull it's going to pull that tag out sometimes and your whole knot you'll be left with the you know the pig's curly q tail um and that means you're not failed that's right so we like to put a drop of super glue on there and that just kind of binds everything together you know, it's waterproof as you know, um, and that just, it's just one more step that you're creating strength in your whole rig. Really? So, um, after, Where is, do you need that? The super glue? Yeah. Yeah, we can, we can you definitely go ahead and go ahead and do it. Okay, yeah. So I'll get it real quick. Yep. We want to put it on. Yep. Might as well, because it's not like we're not going to use that rig. Yeah, this, no, this is definitely good. We're going with that. This this isn't just for the video. We're actually gonna use this whole this whole rig right here that we're making. This stuff uh I don't know what this is actually, but some type of super glue. But it's uh it's made by DAP. I know you can't isn't that nice that everything's wiped off, you can't see it. <laughs> uh that but it's might called, be because we use it a lot. Yeah, that is exactly <laughs> why. But it's called uh it's called rapid fuse. And uh that's what I found it. It won't melt the line. Um a couple of types of super glue will melt the, melt the knot and the, the line will break. Yeah, because that, that chemical reaction yeah. between plastic and this, whatever's in super glue. That rapid fuse. I know you can't read it, but that's a promise you. That's what it says. Yep. And it don't take but a dab of this stuff. It's real sticky when it comes out, so it just takes a little dab on the knot. Yeah. What's that old cologne? Just a dab will do you? Just a dab. <laughs> yeah. Brill cream. A little yeah. dab will do it. A little dab will do it. We're just gonna put a little dab right. Is this overkill? Of course it is. Yeah. But I, you know, if you hook a if you hook a ten to twelve pound sheep's head, uh, if you've ever done that, you, you, you know, if you haven't done it yet, man, there's, like you said, pound for pound. I don't know how. Unless you hooked an amberjack, I, I I don't know how how you compare the fight. It is insane. Yeah, and but, Richie has put hundreds and hundreds of clients on monster sheep's head he's i mean you've actually got what the win a uh, couple 20, of state records couple state yeah. record sheep's head on his charter trips um no that, that makes me special but just we've gotten lucky and gotten into some big ones you know over, and, over 12. and the reason they were landed is because of the care that he took in, in the building rig. the rigs that's right because when you get a, a sheep's head over 10 12 pounds oh man it's 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 a way different fight than a, a six or even eight pounder. Yeah, that, it is. that that two to four pounds extra, I mean it's it's like I, I don't even know hooking up from a lawnmower to a uh, to a track. It's hard to explain. Yeah. yeah, just from a couple of pounds, you know, the eight pounders like oh he's pretty good, you know. Yeah, but those ten and twelves, man, they just they don't stop bulldogging back. Yeah, in the they bar. are bulldogs. They're not sure. bad about getting back in the wreck or anything. They're just man, they just yeah, they just pull harder when you're fishing with this light stuff. Yeah. 
they're going to pull the drag out and you're going to have to tighten up a little yes. bit because or else you'll never get them up. Yeah. And once you add that extra drag, you're putting even oh, more man. strain on your whole rig. And once again, it goes back to sheep's head will expose your weakest part in your whole rig. Yeah. So. We're put, we're putting about, we're, we're running the drag at 10, 12 pounds. I mean, it's, you know, not crazy, crazy tight, but it's, I mean, that, yeah, it's yeah. it'll pull the rod out of your hand. If you're you're gonna feel it. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna feel it. You want it where the drag barely will come out without just destroying everything. Yeah, or you're not gonna catch him because mm -mm. he's gonna he's gonna shake off. You want that fight to go as fast as it can go, um, or he's gonna come off. Yeah, the big ones are very talented at doing that. They didn't get big by not doing that. <laughs> no, they're not stupid. No, they're not. So, um, now that we've got the super glue on there. Um, it's already it's already dry. That's how quick it happens. Um, we're going to go with the actual leader line below the swivel below the swivel to the hook. Um, we don't we don't like real long leaders. Real long leaders. The further away from that weight that you are, the less likely you're going to feel that pressure. Is what I'm going to. That's the word I'm going to use because it's not a bite. It's a pressure. Because when you're sitting there sheep's head fishing, you're just going up and down, up and down. When you feel that slight pressure change, that's the sheep's head. So the further that hook is from the weight, the less of the pressure you feel. So you want to be pretty tight to the hook, but not super close to where he sees that weight and leaves. Um, so we go 8 to 12 inches of leader from the hook to the weight. Yeah. It's the shortest leader that we tie for any type of fishing. Anything. Because um, you gotta you gotta bring it off the bottom too. So you want your weight off the bottom, but you don't want to have it three or four feet off the bottom. You just you just can't feel the bite as good. So that leader needs to be, and you need to account for that when it hits the bottom. That foot or two of leader, whatever you tie, about twenty inches, whatever we tie here, we'll know that in the old brain. So when when the weight hits the bottom, we want to come up about a foot just where that fiddler's hanging into that structure. Mm -hmm. and, and, and by the length of your leader, you know how far that needs to be. That's right. You don't want it way up above or he won't never hit it. you mm -hmm. got to be on those fish um, for him to bite it. That's right. Um, so when we cut our leader, we're going to cut a little extra. So I go about 15 inches total because you got to equate for, you know, tying the knot and clipping the line and all that. But finished product is going to be 8 to 12 inches of line from your hook to your, to your swivel where the weight's going to rest. So... Once again, whatever line to terminal tackle uh, knot that you prefer. Like I said, we use a clinch knot. Put that on, um, and that's gonna. Once you tie everything, it's gonna it's gonna take up about an inch off of each side. Yes, it will. So you're gonna be left if you cut 15 inches and you take an inch or two off of each side. You're gonna be left with eight to 12 inches of leader which is the perfect amount we found. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got their own opinion. That's right. Um, do what you think. This is just what works for us in the area that we fish. So, I'd recommend it. Yep. It works. Well, I mean, we've done this in Florida. We, yeah. We've done it in multiple states yeah. that, that have sheep's head, and this rig tends to work. Hey, and not just reef fishing for them either. We've caught them, you know, under bridges, wherever. This is, mm -hmm. this is the rig we use. You know, the, we may vary the weight size, yeah, depending. But, but yeah, but three ounces is going to kind of cover you no matter where you are, unless the current's just crazy, and then it's it's hard too hard to catch them anyway. A lot of times we leave it alone. So you want that three ounces on there because it, it'll hang in the current for you. If you use it one ounce, um, it, it, that thing will swing out on you away from your piling or your structure. So that three ounce tends to be, oh, it's just the right weight for it. It'll keep you in line with the fish. You start getting a, a, a severe angle off the boat, you know, you don't, you're not ever going to probably be straight down unless the tide's dead, then you're not catching them. Um, <laughs> no, they, but, like, they like a little bit of current. If your angle gets more than like, I don't know, say, just guessing 30, 35, 40 degrees off your rod tip, left or right with the current, man, it gets hard to feel them. And also you're going to end up getting hung. So that's, a, that's another thing to look for too. Try to keep and fish straight up and down as much as possible. This three... Back to what we're talking about will allow you to do that most of the time in most current conditions unless you're fishing right on top of the moon in the middle of the outgoing yeah 
um, which I don't recommend doing that. Mm -mm. Wait till that sucker slows down a little bit. You do want moving current. They do not like slack tide, so mm -mm. just a little bit of current is all you need. Yes, it is. What you do. Um, also, when rigging, highly recommend getting a very, very sharp pair of scissors to get as close to those uh, tag ends as possible. We use the Westcott Titaniums. Yes. Um, small, compact work very well at getting very close because as you can see it's got a very sharp point on them those suckers can, are all over our boats yeah, yeah i mean yeah i mean we've got at least two to three pair on each boat, each boat yeah because you i mean where's the scissors you don't want to be looking for them just grab them nip off that that tag in very good pair of scissors yeah. always um so now we will show you the finished rig now that all the super glue yeah, is dry. Yeah, every part of it again. So, so you know what's going on with it. Yep. Once again, here's the line to line connection from where you're going to go from your main line to your weight line. We'll call this. This so, is what do we do? Fifty pound braid to to fifty pound to fifty pound leader leader. Yep. Mono. Any any leader will work. It's fine. But yeah, that's your line to line connection because once again, we don't want the weight on the braid because braid is known for not being abrasion resistant it just isn't yeah. mono is abrasion resistant braid is not doesn't matter if you get 8 12 16 strand braid at some point it's going to start fraying yeah, and you do not want that with sheep's head um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so after the line to line connection from the braid to the mono leader you've got your weight and your swivels or your uh i'm sorry your beads your beads are above and below the weight. Once again, that stops it from beating up the knot, stops it from going onto your, your braided line because some of the line to line connections, depending on what weight you're going to, your your weight will go right over that, that knot. Yeah, and well, onto then your, you got a problem. Onto your braid. Yeah, then so you got a problem. that's why we use this. I mean, it's a stopper bead. That's all it is. It's going to stop it from going over that knot. It stops it from, I mean, that's... That's a lot of pressure right yeah, there. Yeah, and if it goes over that knot up onto your braid, you got to use that bead. If it goes onto that braid, I promise you it will tangle. Guaranteed. It's going to tangle up. And if you yeah. hook a fish, it's going to wrap around itself and it's going to cut your mono. Mm -hmm. That's what will happen. That braid will cut the mono when it tightens on it. Yeah. And uh, not to mention, if you look, that is a lot of, I mean, and that's what's happening underwater. I mean, exactly. it's coming up, it's hitting it's that. It's banging on it all it's the time. It's banging. So those, those beads really help the strength of the knot because you're not beating your knot up agreed so there's that 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 weight line goes all the way down to your terminal tackle of your swivel there's your swivel with your line your line to terminal tackle connections knots i hate to use a swivel but you, in this situation there's no you, way not to. you got the feather's to. gonna spin yeah, that claw sits, you know, it just sits out there in that, that current. And just, it just it does. does that. And even if you break it off, that sucker's little legs, man. He's There's all kinds of stuff. And he's, yeah. he's square. Yeah, he is. I mean, he's he's built for catching yeah. current. He's not hydrodynamic. <laughs> At all. No. No. So, swivel under the weight and beads. And then under the swivel, you're going to go straight to that hook. Now, you can use whatever stout, long shank, you know, J hook, whatever you want to use. This is this is what we use. Like I said, it's a Mustad 3467 in size two. Um, we, like Richie said earlier, you go on any forum. This is this is the sheep's head hook. Yep. Um, we've used other little stout hooks. Um, the biggest problem we ever find with it is the shank. The shank is so short on most stout little hooks because it's a live bait hook usually. And, is, yeah. and that live bait hook has a real short shank. And when a sheep's head gets it in their mouth, it is so hard. I mean, you're wasting so much time trying to dig it out with pliers and things like this. This one's going to stick out and of the mouth. You're going to bend it. That little short one. You, that yeah. Little, but yeah, live bait hook, you're going to bend it eventually. Yeah, because you're trying to dig with pliers. But this one, yeah. most of the time, you can get your hands on it and just pop it yes. out. When you start using pliers on hooks, I don't. I mean, I don't care how stout they are unless it's a swordfish hook. Um, you're going to start bending them, especially the barb, the point, you know, whatever, the shank of the hook. Um, At minimum, you're going to weaken it. Yep. Yes. And I'm going to tell you, a 12 pound sheep said we'll find any weak point. Anything. We've come up with just the shank of the hook before. Yeah. 
Yeah, we had a good fish, and he's broke the hook. Mm -hmm. so yeah, it's from a big deal. Digging around with pliers. Oh, that's so right. Longer mm -hmm. shank hook, way better, just because you're going to have that outside the sheep's head mouth. You can just pop it out with your hands instead of using pliers. Every now and again, you have to use pliers. Just be careful when you're doing it. Um, but super sharp, and like I said, it's a, it's an offset, which is really good for sheep's head because they're notorious for getting it off the hook very easily and you're not going to know it but slightly offset it's got a little bend to it but the gap is the biggest thing that it's small gap, you don't want a super large gap you'll never hook him mm -mm. you'll never hook him if it's a wide gap yep so you can see that's not a very wide gap right there so highly recommend this hook um but once again use what your preference is so uh if you have any other comments, questions, um, you can leave them in the comment section below and uh, we'll get back to you ASAP. If we need to make a video on said comments, we'll, we'll make a video to um, address what, you, what you've what you asked. Yeah, we'll answer your comments. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll answer it and, and, uh, and then we'll also put up a video of uh, sheep's head fishing with this rig so that you know that you know what we're putting out here it, it works you know for us so um yeah, it does yep this, it'll work for you too it Just, will so yeah. this this is the rig that we use um so we hope that you find something useful in this video um hopefully all of it and uh hopefully it helps you catch more fish um and then once we're out there you know sheep's head fishing We'll make another video to where you, you know what we look for in structure. Yeah, you know what we what we do with our baits, how we hook our baits. You know what we're using. Um, obviously, the rig is right here, but um, Captain Richie's really good at finding sheep's head spots. It's not what you think because no, it's not. You're, you're actually not looking for fish. So nope. um, yeah. We'll, we'll make another video on that. Yeah, and I'll show you guys what to look for on the sonar. We've mm -hmm. already had a request for that. Yep. And then uh, and show you how to, what we're looking for, like, on the sonar itself. Um, like you said, it's not fish. If we're marking fish, it's probably going to be snapper, and it's just going to be a battle to, yeah. battle with snapper to get to. And sea bass. Get to, yeah, and sea bass to get to the yeah. uh, sheep's head. Mm -hmm. So very rarely do you actually mark them. When they get into the herds of them, when they're about to leave in March, you might see a little bit on there. But yeah, yeah, I'm looking for stuff very small off the grid, mainly rocks, um, pieces of a wreck. But I certainly don't want to fish where other people are fishing no. um, a lot. So yeah, and it, it just gets them stirred up. Yeah, yep. and we're certainly not fishing where we're seeing a bunch of fish. No, you know the markings no. of fish. We're not. That's. Yeah. In fact, when you go up to the spot, you, you look at it and you're like, man, that's barren. Marks up like a brick. Yeah. That's good. Key. Yeah. Yes. So stay tuned for those videos. Um, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Peace.